Hey, what's going on guys? Time for my long-awaited review of a movie that I've been waiting so long to see. Finally got a chance to watch it. About to review it now. And that movie is The Loved Ones. Oh, our times have come. I don't know what it was about this movie, but from the first time I ever saw film stills from it, and then the first time I watched the trailer, I was absolutely hooked, I was pulled in, I needed to see this immediately. Um, it took me a while to get hold of a copy, but Andrew B Ballin hooked me up, which was awesome of him, he hooked me up with the Blu-ray. But then, as you guys know, as I said before, um, it is a region-locked Blu-ray, and I do not yet have a region-free Blu-ray player. So, again, I still couldn't watch the movie. Um, so then Eric, Girls and Gore hooked me up with a copy of the DVD I could watch, and finally got around to doing it. Very, very excited about this. It took me so long to, to uh, finally watch this movie. And as I said, you know, I was obsessed with this movie before I even saw it. So I just got done watching it, and I have to say, for me, it definitely lived up to the hype. And I think that's because it was slightly different than I thought it would be. Um, it definitely followed, the, you know, the idea. I, I knew what the movie was about, so, you know, that wasn't anything anything too different. But there were, you know, a few things that were different about it that I, di I didn't really expect, that I didn't really see coming, or, and that I just didn't know about the storyline. So I really enjoyed that, and I think that's where it really helped it live up to that hype, because I had this movie so high on a pedestal, as I said, before I even watched it, I was obsessed for some reason. I just loved everything about it, about the storyline, about you know, all the pictures I had seen of it, the trailer. Um, you know, it just looked, looked amazing to me. For those of you who don't know much about this movie, it is an Australian film. It has never been released here in the U.S. yet. I know later on this year there is a DVD release due. I'm not sure about a Blu-ray release. I didn't see anything about that, but I know it will definitely be out on DVD in the U.S. later on this year. So that's cool for anybody who hasn't had a chance to check it out yet. Um, you know, as I said, I, I had to get my copies from both Andrew Ballina as well as Girls and Gore. Um, so, you know, they, they really hooked me up because I just couldn't wait for it to be officially released here in the U.S. I um, had to go for the Australian release. Um, so, yeah, um, really enjoy this, as I said. You know, uh, and again, for those of you who don't know much about it, I'm going to go into a brief synopsis now, tell you a little bit about the storyline. I won't try to, I'll, I'll try not to give away too many spoilers, I won't give away the ending, so don't worry about that, and then I'll just tell you guys how I feel about it. The Loved One centers around a character named Brent, who you can see right here. Brent lives alone with his mother, he has a girlfriend named Holly. At the beginning of the movie, the opening scene actually, we find out that Brent was driving a car, his father was in the passenger seat, and they were in a car accident, and his father did not make it. So Brent does feel a little guilty about that, that kind of, uh, you know, plays a role in the story, but... You know, I really don't want to mention that and get into that because I don't really want to spoil anything. Um, so we find that out right at the beginning of the movie. It cuts to six months later where it's the ending, ending of the school year. Um, it's almost time for the end of the year dance. As I said, Brent does have a girlfriend named Holly who he plans to go to the dance with. However, Lola, who you see right here, has a bit of a crush on Brent. So she confronts him in the hallway and asks him to go to the dance with her. Of course, he has to decline because he has a girlfriend, which he tells her, and Lola's not too happy about that. Meanwhile, there is also a secondary story. Brent's friend has also asked a girl that he liked to the dance. She actually ex accepts, so his friend is very excited about that. And as we see, you know, what's going on with Lola and Brent and the rest of the story, we also get to see what's going on with his friend and the girl, Mia, that he's asked to the dance. So it's the night of the dance, and Brent decides to get away for a little downtime before he has to get home to get ready. He does some mountain climbing, listens to some music on the rocks, when suddenly, from behind, a stranger pretty much attacks him, drugs him, and drags him off. Um, meanwhile, Brent's dog is actually stabbed in the process, um, which is pretty sad for any of you animal lovers out there. Um, his, his phone is dropped, so when his mother tries to get in touch with him, you know, she's, she's getting no answer and begins to get a little worried. When Holly shows up at the house to pick up Brent for the dance, and the mother finds out that Holly has not seen Brent either, they both become very worried, especially when the dog shows up at the house Stabbed. Holly takes him in the car, try to get him checked out, but unfortunately the dog doesn't make it, 
So again, for any of you animal lovers, that's probably a scene you're not going to want to see. Um, Holly and the mother immediately notify the police that you know Brent is missing. It's actually a, a, an officer in the town that they know, and also the father of the girl that Brent's friend has asked to the dance. The two interlocking stories really do connect, um, but I don't really want to give anything away, so I'm just going to focus on the Lola Brent storyline. It's soon after that we find out that the stranger who drugged and dragged off Brent is actually Lola's father. Now Brent is basically tied up in the kitchen of Lola's house. Um, he's dressed up in a tux, as you can see, as if he's going to the dance. Lola's father buys her a dress and some shoes to wear, and they're basically going to put on their own little end of the school year dance right at Lola's house. However, the dance that Lola and her father are hosting is a very gruesome one. They even keep a hammer on hand just in case Brent does something wrong. Lola and her father have a very bizarre relationship. When the father brings home the dress and the shoes for her to wear for the dance, instead of asking him to leave the room while she gets dressed, she actually changes right in front of him. You can see the look on his face that he's almost disturbed by it as well, but for some reason they have this very strange attraction to each other, this very, very strange relationship. Lola sits in her room and she works on this scrapbook of all these other guys she used to have crushes on, and she listens to this song, Am I Not Pretty Enough, which is very creepy, um, as well as Lola. I mean, Lola herself is very creepy because there's something that's pretty good looking about her. I mean, she's this decent looking girl, but she's just very, very demented. I mean, as it says here, it, it, you know, it says a truly demented masterpiece. This movie really is, and you know, that's mainly because of Lola. You know, as I said, there's something that's very cute about her, but at the same time, I mean, when you, when you see her in, you know, the, the more violent scenes, I mean, she is a scary, scary girl. So from this point on, it's just a story of survival for Brent. They put him through some pretty gruesome stunts. I mean, you know, she literally makes him go to the bathroom in this cup um, because he says he has to use the bathroom, so she takes a glass and, you know, holds it there for him and tells him he has 10 seconds to go or the father is going to hammer it to the chair. Now, I'm sure you can all imagine what it is. Um, <laughs> this is just one example of the many violent acts that take place in this movie. Again, I'm trying not to give too much away because this movie was very awesome, and it's really, really worth checking out. So I highly recommend this to any of you who are interested, even you know the slightest bit. Um, it's definitely worth it. And again, that's why I'm not trying to go in too far into depth with my review. Um, normally, I say a little bit more about movies, but... As I said, I really don't want to give anything away about this one because it, is, it really just is awesome to see it unfold on screen. I do want to go back and talk more about the character of Lola, though. I have to say she was truly chilling and definitely the best part of this movie for me. To me, she is what a scary horror movie villain is all about because she has this innocence to her, um, this cuteness. As I said, you know, she, she's adorable at times. Um, she, she could be adorable at times, put it that way. She has the potential of being very, very cute and looking very innocent. But then at other times, she has this demented smile. Um, there's one point in the movie where she laughs, and it's almost this witch's cackle. I mean, it's, it's just pretty scary stuff. And as I said, you know, what makes her so scary is that you wouldn't expect it from her. You would never expect her of the brutal and violent acts that take place in this movie. I mean, there's one scene that actually features her using a power drill. Um, and I'm sure you can, you know, kind of uh, figure out where... where that scene is headed, but it's some pretty brutal stuff, pretty gruesome, pretty graphic, really, really cool. I also thought it was pretty cool that the title, The Loved Ones, actually has a double meaning. And while watching the movie, I came to realize what each of those were. Once again, I'm sorry for not going into great detail about the actual storyline of the movie, but I really don't want to give anything away. The movie is pretty short. It's less than 90 minutes. It's 84 minutes or so, I believe. Um... Yeah, so, you know, 84 minutes. So, you know, a, a lot happens in that 84 minutes. It, it's very fast-paced. You know, it starts out pretty fast in the movie, pretty early on. Um, it, it's entertaining throughout. There wasn't a dull moment in this movie for me. And I truly recommend it to anybody, as I said, who even has the slightest interest in seeing this movie. Please go check it out. See it for yourself. You know, see what all the hype is. Um, you know, I'm not the only one that hypes it up. I've heard other people talk highly of this movie as well. But, you know, I, for one, have hyped this movie up a lot, even before I saw it, so, you know, I was including, you know, scenes from this movie in, in my intros before I even saw it, but I'm glad I did now, because as I said, I really enjoyed this, definitely one of my favorite modern day horror films of, you know, the last five years, um, this movie actually came out in, in 2009, I believe, um, 
so yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it for my review. A again, you know, without giving any spoilers away, I wanted to at least say a few things about it. Really enjoyed this one, guys. Highly recommend it. Go check it out. If you have seen it, comment below. Let me know what you think about it. And thanks for watching, guys.